All right, I braved these uh, blizzard conditions for you, so hope you guys appreciate it. Woo, it's snowing. Good thing I have my Santa Claus beard. Hey everybody, before we begin, I just want to say uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah to uh, those of you who celebrate that way. It's late December and uh, Santa Claus should be coming in a few days. Woohoo! <laughs> Alright, let's talk about this messenger bag for a second, shall we? The specific model is the Low Key Attaché and it's made by Shellback Tactical. It was given to me by a friend that I hang out with online called T Medina. Obviously that's his username and not his real name. So I'd like to say thanks T for letting me have the bag. I guess he got caught up in some kind of minimalist uh, cult or something and he was uh, unloading a lot of his gear, just giving it away to a good home. And uh, I was lucky enough to snag the bag. He, uh, he bought it new, he, uh, he gently used it for uh, a little bit. And I bring that up only because we're gonna talk about the durability of the bag. Uh, in a little bit. Now this bag happens to be uh, discontinued but here's the thing you know you hear that and you're like why should we talk about a discontinued bag and here's the, here's the reason it's still available online at numerous websites so that's important right because we can still buy it new of course it's always going to be available on the secondary market used on top of that uh, we're going to look at the durability and the construction and the quality of the bag and I think that will also help people who are just looking at shellback tactical products generally because I think they're pretty famous for um, their plate carriers. And after looking at this bag, I have some things to say about uh, their quality and whether or not you should consider buying anything from them. And besides all that, we're going to discuss a lot of the features this bag has or doesn't have in terms of other messenger bags and other small um, tactical messenger bags. And, you know, if you're in the market for any of those, you know, there's some things to consider that I think it'll be helpful to look at this bag for that. I should mention that I've been carrying it for about two months steady. Um, and I meant to make this video about a month ago, but I haven't had time. But I got to get it done because my wife has been clamoring to take this bag uh, for her own. She really likes the size and the features. So I got to give it up now. Okay, we're going to head over to my truck, throw it on the tailgate, and we'll take a closer look at the uh, features. Okay, to quote Shellback Tactical, this bag was designed to allow a user to have a low profile carry bag that can be configured to carry all of your essential gear that the mission slash duty requires. The high speed bag's design has pockets to carry admin gear, is molly pouch configurable, accommodates small laptops, it has a rear ambidextrous access pocket to conceal a handgun. The low key attache accommodates many of Tactical Assault Gear's molly pouches. Okay, here's the specs, it's made out of 1000 Cordura. It has a detachable padded shoulder strap and also a detachable waist strap. It has a hidden rear compartment for a small, full-sized handgun. I don't know what a small, full-sized handgun is. Either the handgun's small or it's full-sized, right? I don't know who wrote this. Continuing to quote Shellback Tactical's product page. It has a low-profile design. Interior wall has molly, pals, and hook-and-loop webbing. The admin area has multiple interior and exterior pockets. The bag will fit small laptops. It's made in the USA. It has a lifetime warranty, and as of right now, late 2016, it is available in ATAX, Multicam, Ranger Green, Black, and Coyote. Of course, this is the ATAX version. The original price was $139.95, but it's on sale, buy one, get one, at various places. I've also seen it for sale at other uh, websites for less than $60. I should say that the overall dimensions are 12 inches by 9.5 inches by 5.5 inches. Uh, side release buckles are... ITW Nexus products, high quality there. Okay, right away we can see that the uh, grab handle is pretty well sewn, cross-stitched. Okay, no complaints there. There's a front pocket on the flap. It has a pull-out ID holder. You can get rid of that and run uh, a patch on there for whatever reason if you don't want the ID holder. Okay, it just folds back in there. Pretty deep, it goes down about a hand's width, about eight inches wide. Okay, once we flip this open, another pocket right here. Whew. I thought I had emptied this out, but I guess not. Okay, standard, standard pocket. Gonna talk about this stuff in a minute. 
on the inside, okay, admin section over here, long zip pocket, pocket for a multi-tool or a flashlight, some slip pockets here for uh, pens or whatever have you, another deep slip pocket here, zipper pocket here, just got some I don't even know what that I don't even know what that's doing in there. Now on the side walls, you guys can see there's standard PALS webbing on either side, right? And on the back, all Velcro PALS webbing. Okay. The idea is of course you can put Velcro backed pouches along here. And on the sides or anywhere along here, you can use regular Molly pouches to set this up any way you want. The bag is definitely deep enough to carry a 27 ounce clean canteen or a 32 ounce Nalgene bottle. It's kind of a bummer that there's not some kind of slip pocket just to like keep it steady because when this thing's loaded up, you know, this is going to fall over. You can't find it. If you do have it like this and load around it, pull this out, you can't ever get it back in. Uh, I'm a guy who likes to run a water bottle all the time, so that's a little bit of a bummer for me. But uh, that is what it is. There's a pocket on the flap. Okay. Mesh. Uh, I'm a little concerned that the mesh runs right up to the edge here. It's not the end of the world, but I think it's a little bit of an issue. Now, there used to be uh, side release buckles that attached on the side, either side for the waist strap. Um, this one was completely gone when I got the bag. This whole seam blew out, which like I said, this bag was gently used, so the seam blowing out here is kind of a bummer. This bag shows no other signs of wear, really, so for that seam to blow out, I think is indicative of a quality issue, uh, indicative of a quality control issue. Um, that said, also, as far as like quality and workmanship, now, <clears throat> this is sewn all the way down right here, right? For the uh, strap, the shoulder strap. You're not gonna be able to see it, but if you feel right here, I can tell that this nylon webbing stops about a half inch past this seam, okay? On a real heavy duty bag, and other companies do this, you know, the strap will come all the way down the side, around the bottom, and back up the other side, so it's fully supporting all the weight at the bottom, okay? Both of these side straps, um, you know, that hold this, this shoulder strap, stop right here. Okay, you can feel it if you pinch it. Now, I bring that up only because Shellback Tactical, I think, is obviously not known for their EDC gear. They're more of a hardcore tactical company. As such, they, I believe one of their main products is a plate carrier. After, after seeing the seam blown out and the fact that they're not overbuilding this area with, that's taken all the weight, I don't know. I mean, I personally would not buy other stuff from them. It's not... It's just, I mean, this is almost like airsoft quality. You know what I mean? And that's a subjective opinion. But I think if you know, we all shop around for nylon gear. I own a lot of bags. That's that's not good quality. And yeah, like this seam blew out. Where is it? This, this seam blew out. And you could say like, well, lifetime warranty. And, you know, obviously maybe I could have sent the bag back and got a free bag. But it is discontinued, so... Maybe I couldn't get a free bag, right? Maybe I'd get store credit or something. Who knows? But it shouldn't blow out. Like a seam shouldn't blow out before the you know there's any wear or tear anywhere else on the bag. And yes, I know that nothing lasts forever, but that's a bit of a bummer. Now, you know, to fight out of this bag, you got to flip the lid to get to anything you might have in here. Whether it's you know pouches for magazines, whether it's um, a firearm, whatever you need in here, you know, you got to flip it. And of course, most messenger bags have the lid, but nowadays the ones designed to fight out of have a zipper along the top somewhere so you can get direct access to the main compartment without having to flip the lid. Now, I mentioned earlier that it has this area in the back for carrying a concealed handgun. And of course, this part lays right on your hip. 
and it's not padded, right? So if there's a firearm back here, you're gonna have something hard on your hip or your leg or whatever, which is not the end of the world if you carry strong side or appendix or whatever. You know, you're used to having a firearm against your body, but the other problem is no matter which side you access this from, whether you're a righty or a lefty, right? The Velcro's on the opposite side, so you're gonna have to fight. How are you gonna get a, a combat grip on your firearm when it's Velcro to this side, right? I mean, you would wanna come in like this, you know, to draw. So I personally think the Velcro should have all been on this side, right? I mean, I don't know what I'm missing there, but... Okay, and the other thing you'll notice is there's no tab here or anything. You, you know, you're gonna have to grab this little bit of the seat and force it open. You're gonna have to manhandle the other side of the bag just to even get into it, so... To conceal a firearm, great, right? I mean, you can't even see the pocket. There's no way it's gonna print through the entirety of the bag. And, you know, that's all well and good. And Granted, they call this thing the low pro attache, right? Or excuse me, they call this the low key attache. So maybe that's all well and good, but the amount of time and the dexterity and the fine motor skills you need to access a firearm from the back, not to mention the fact that once you even get it open, Velcro's on the wrong side to be a smooth draw with any of those Velcro holsters you know, I think is a is a complete miss. You know, this is not well thought out as far as a bag to fight out of. Okay, let's talk about the shoulder strap, right? So the shoulder strap's not, it's kind of seat belt soft, right? It's not that hard. Um, it's about an inch and a half. This is the padded shoulder strap. Very tacky on this side, padded. Okay, I never run these things. I take these, get rid of them right away. Now, because the uh, seam blew out and I was missing half of the, uh, I was missing the other attachment, for this, I got rid of the waist belt. Now, I normally run some kind of Maxpedition or VanQuest tactical messenger bag. You guys probably have seen my videos or have seen my posts online at various forums, but I never run the waist strap, okay? I either cut the waist strap off, right? I just get rid of it, okay? But that said, this has another problem, which, let's just look at this. By the way, I got this little tape from a girl called Calico Salsa. Her company, 3koi.com, does promotional products, but uh, anyway. Okay, so the bag is 12 inches, right? So 12 inches. Now I got this strap collapsed all the way down. Okay. So we're basically at, let's call it, well, almost four feet, 47 inches, including this, is the smallest you can make the waist strap. Now, uh, you know, I'm a pretty pudgy dude here in my late middle-aged physique, okay? But 48 inches, when it's tightened all the way down, right? This is collapsed all the way down. See, cinched all the way down. Well, how good is that for a fit guy who's gonna need a bag to fight out of? Oops, hang on, this tape got caught in the tripod. You know, that's, that's kind of a miss there too. That thing is completely useless. You know, if, 20 years ago, you know, I was nowhere near as big as I am now. And plus, anybody who's a young guy now, anybody who's physically fit now, they're not going to have a 48-inch waist. So who, who, who is that belt meant for? You know, Jabba the Hut. I mean, the biggest it should get is 48, not the smallest, right? So that, that, that belt is completely worthless. I mean, again, what were they thinking when they sewed, sewed that up? And I bring it up only because, you know, before you waste money on other shellback tactical products, you know, that's really something to consider. You know, they don't care about running, about this bag being able to handle weight. They obviously have seams that are blowing out. M running the mesh right down to a hem 
where it's kind of exposed to grab it on stuff is bad. And then this thing is like way too long. All of those are real misses to the bag. And that's a bit of a bummer. So if I could fix anything on this bag, if they ever decide to reintroduce this, run this strap all the way over from side to side so that the shoulder strap is taking all the weight all the way around. I mean, for the love of God, like make this thing max out at like 44 inches. And then on top of that, I like that there's no water bottle pocket on the outside. I don't mind opening the bag up to get to the water. And yeah, I could put a Molly water bottle thing in here, but why add complexity? I would just like a sleeve on either side for a water bottle. That's just me personally. A lot of guys, I'm sure, don't run water. If you don't run water, you know, who cares, right? Um, so yeah, I kind of, this is like, uh, it's not a huge messenger bag, so I really dig the size. It's, it's like, there's stuff here. You really want to love the bag for a lot of reasons, but it's it's just, you know, I would never spend money on this, okay? That said, I have been carrying it for two months. My wife, who doesn't think like I do, uh, doesn't have the same concerns I do, thinks this is great. She's been eyeing this up since the moment uh, Team Adina was kind enough to send it to me. So yeah, she'll be taking this. Anyway, maybe down the road we'll have uh, her come on film and she can give you her opinion. But yeah, so, I don't know. I kind of wish it was better made. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. What's, what's this? It's my new Olight headlamp. Yeah, yeah, we'll look at that later. Thanks again to T for letting me have the bag. Y'all take care. Now, you might be asking yourself, how well does the camo hide if you were carrying this briefcase? out in the woods. Well, not too bad, right? I mean, can you guys see it there? Let's look a little closer. Now, granted, this is uh, late December in the eastern woods. So, you know, everything's dead around here. But there you go. Okay, this is touted as a, a fighting bag, okay? There's some features on here that are well-intentioned, but poorly executed. The first thing that's a real major problem for CCW carriers is that, I don't know if you guys can see in here. You see the Velcros all on the outside, and there's no Velcro on the inside, okay? So, let me put my flashlight away, right? Velcro's on this side of that compartment, not on this side. So, no matter which side you reach in from, right, your sidearm is going to be on the opposite side. The sidearm would be out here, right? Same thing if you're carrying from this way, right? You're going to want to reach in. That's a, that's a bad detail right there. Now, this would be forgivable, except that they were trying to sell this as a fighting bag, right? It was intended to be a fighting bag. So that's a problem. The other problem is, no matter which way you're trying to get into this, there's no, like, tab or anything, right? So you have to flip the bag kind of vertical, find a way to rip it open. You only have, like, a little bit of area to get your fingers in there, a little bit of fabric to pull it out, even if you could access the firearm that way. So that's kind of a bad detail to my way of thinking. The other thing is there's no zipper on the top of this bag. So in order to access anything that you have attached to any of the PALS webbing that's inside of this bag, you're gonna have to like flip it up, assuming that it's not attached via the SRB buckles, right? You're gonna have to flip it up and then like try to get at stuff, okay? Which if you were gonna fight out of this bag, I guess once the problem starts, if you have time, you could open it wide open and access it there, but then stuff can spill out. That's why most bags have the zipper. Okay, so that, those are like some big problems as far as having this as a tactical bag. Okay, now if you're just storing a sidearm in here, it doesn't really matter, right? But And the other thing is, unlike say a Maxpedition Jumbo or 
uh, any of its clones that have a zipper right here. You just like whoosh, zipper in and out. Um, you know, something similar to something similar to an on-body draw. You know, you're not going to have that here. You're going to have to like get the bag up, pull it. You know, and again, the Velcro is on the wrong side, so it's all kind of a moot issue. You'd be crazy to try to carry a, a sidearm in this. The other thing that we should look at is that, um, you know, I, like I mentioned earlier, I cut the uh, side release buckle off each end so there's no waist strap. You know, if you did have a waist strap on this, um, you know, there, that even complicates the draw further, right? Undo the side release buckle here, you know, wherever, undo it here on the back, whatever. Then you gotta like get the bag up into your workspace, open it and try to try to fumble get the firearm out so you know i'm not an authority on uh, fighting bags but these are obvious problems to anybody who's ever carried a sidearm you know for more than two minutes especially off body in a bag